Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight here on the east coast of the United States of America, and we'll be serving up uh, some of the finest uh, podcasting you can hear anywhere. Not true. Uh, probably one of the most insignificant uh, attempts at podcasting going, okay? We've been doing this for what? Uh, we're in our sixth year of doing this. What a futile expression of uh, faith it is, okay? Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, how are you? What's uh, what's new with you? Uh, we're getting down there. This is a five days till election day, although election day has really started. You know, I think from here on in, we're going to think of it as a voting season, because a lot of states have gone for early voting, um, and most of them actually, and uh, so a lot of the vote is. Before Election Day, probably more people will have voted than voted in the last election. That's a good possibility. Uh, right now, uh, I think in Florida, they're about to hit almost 100% of all the votes cast in the last presidential election just by early voting and by mail-in. Uh, that does not include the people who are old-fashioned and are going to go down on uh, November 3rd to their polling place to vote, okay? Okay. Uh, and so, but what I want to say to all of you is, is that uh, the, the main message, I guess, being expressed everywhere, and it is, uh, it is worth expressing over and over and over again, if you can do it, go down to your local polling place and do the early voting. It's uh, very simple. It's just like uh, any other voting, except maybe, you, you, I don't know, you might have to wait in a longer line, or you don't know. I mean, you don't know that Election Day there isn't going to be, be a big line at your polling place, especially in those states where they're trying to suppress the vote. And I think it's very important that we get out the vote and we get it out big. It may They, they expect this may be the... Uh, largest amount of people voting in a presidential election in a hundred years, okay? Uh, and I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be more than that because, after all, there were less people back then. Um, but in any event, uh, it's going to be a lot of votes, and people are going to be voting very simply for one reason— they want to make sure their candidate wins, and they want to make sure more than anything else that their vote counts. Uh, the vote doesn't really count all that much if uh, somehow it gets uh, suppressed or uh, th thrown in a garbage can somewhere or whatever. You want to know that vote has been cast. So go down to your polling place and do it, or in states like New Jersey where you mail it in, but then you can go online and see that they got it and that they registered your vote. Um, that's another way of doing it. What we did the other day, my young lass and I, uh, Marjorie, she's younger than I am, about uh, four years, I think. Uh, we went down to the uh, polling place. We, we voted. It's plain and simple. We voted. And um, uh, we, uh, I, I recorded the whole thing using my iPhone. And as usual, I will bore you with another home movie of what it was like so that you can get an idea of what it might be like for you. It's a lot of fun, actually. Marjorie? This is a pretty long line. It goes all the way up there. Let's see how far it goes. Does it? Thank you. She said it's moving fast. It's moving fast, yeah, but look where it starts. By the way, we should mention that the school itself, or where it's being, the vote is taking place, is on about the other side of here. On 115th Street. On 115th Street, so this is literally going around the Here, it's right here. Do you want to try? Yes, she said it's moving forward. Yeah. 
people have brought chairs. Wait a minute. Here. Oh. Gotta wait for people to watch. What time is it right now? What time is it? It is. Uh, I don't know. Here, I'll look. <laughs> What time? 12.15. 12.15. So here we are, early voting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> New York City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's moving. I mean, when you saw the pictures like in um, some of the other yeah. states, they were yeah. standing for what hours. What do you need to do to prove you're, you're a voter? Well, you got that card that we, we got, got in the mail. We got the card. Yeah. And, and you have your, ID, your driver's license with your yeah. picture. We don't have to bring our, our ballot with us. No, because we're not doing absentee. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to wait in this line. Which seems like it's moving, so. It seems like it's And then moving. what we're going to do after that is we're going to treat ourselves to brunch. Oh, really? I knew yeah. you were going to say something like that. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, you're going to eat outside in this cold? No, they're putting heaters up. Oh, we went to cafeteria yesterday on yeah. Friday, Natalia and I. Yeah. And they have heaters up. Really? They're putting, all the restaurants are putting heaters up. It's going to be like Paris. Yeah. Oops. Keep our social distance. Yep. The line is twice as long as it would be because of the social distancing. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And everybody's wearing a mask. Yeah. You can't get inside without a mask, and you yeah. probably can't even sit in the line without a mask. Well, they wouldn't want you to. Exactly. Now, you see, this is where we're going to vote on the other side of the street. Okay. So, on 115th yeah, street. but it says, you know, please enter through 115th, yeah, we're street, on 115th street for voting. Yeah, we're, we're uh, still in line. Yes, we are. You're, you, this for is, for this somebody is, who's very is, impatient, you're you're doing remarkably well. <laughs> this is the new look. Huh? This is the new. This is a winter look. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you know, the mask wearing season is great for dating when it comes to ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's nice to see we're in a group of it's wearing masks. Everybody's wearing masks. You know, you walk down yeah. 116th Street, and nobody's wearing masks. Well, that's not true. It's younger people aren't wearing the masks, but older people are wearing hmm. them. Because we don't want to die. So there's a woman down there passing out water. Yeah. For the vo from the voting people. Absolutely. You know, they're doing it. Well, and we're getting closer to, we're about... We're right near Adam Clayton Powell. Right near Adam Clayton Powell. And where we have to go is the other side of this building. Yeah, the other side of this building. And we found out that we could do the absentee ballots. Absentee ballots. We, we could have just brought them and dropped them here. But for some reason, I want to do it in person. Why? Just to say you did it? Well, just that I know that. I mean, it, either way. No, that way you know you you dropped the, you do yeah. you dropped it off at a polling place. You know. Yeah. It's going to be counted. So, anyway, voting in the new normal. Voting in the new normal. Usually you just go up to the voting place and walk in. Yeah. This is going to probably have the largest amount of people voting. Oh, it, it is already. It's passing. Well, no, and, it's about halfway no, towards no, the No, no, in most. the United States, early yeah. voting has like doubled what was four uh, years well, ago. Yeah, but the, we're, about, we're at about half of the normal vote. So it's going to really be quite a vote. Yeah. Hopefully. Because, you know, this uh, early voting, you know, she has an absentee ballot. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out all you can do, do all you have to do is walk it, over and there's yeah, just, just a drop-off box. Yeah. But that feels weird. It does feel weird. And I, I, for some reason, we got the absentees at home. I know. I, so I was talking to my parents and they said it gets counted, but it gets counted differently. Whereas if I just wait in line and do it, it's then and there and done. So. And, and, and you know you've done it. I'm going to give it an hour. I think it's moving great. Well, it's yes, moving you okay. Have it and yeah, I it. we I mean, have it, but left at home. <laughs> Wait, what, what time is it now? It's twelve. It's ten minutes to get over here. So it's yeah. ten minutes from yeah. getting in That's not yeah, bad. That's not bad. Some guy brought a chair with him, but I don't think he's going to need it. What are they passing? 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was so nice. So it was like a like some. It was like some. It was some for voting. Yeah. No, but it was like some restaurant who was doing publicity for himself by giving out free sandwiches. That's great. Next thing you know, they're going to have jugglers out here. <laughs> okay, we've reached out. We have turned now. the corner. We have turned one corner. We have one more corner to turn. We're almost at 115th Street. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're passing out water. And you sandwiches. Know? And, and some, some place that has a restaurant is passing out free sandwiches. sandwiches. That's so nice. I mean, it's they've turned it into an event. New Yorkers come together. Yeah. New Yorkers are great. Yeah. You know. Turning the corner? We are turning the corner. Oh, boy. And we're almost there. We're halfway down the block is the school. Yeah. This hasn't been that bad. No, no, no. Here, let me give you this. No, 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 don't give me anything yet. We don't know what we're going to need or not need. All right. We're still in line to vote. Yes, but we it's, are. But it's, the line's get, getting better. Getting better. But uh, nobody can tell how old we are. That's true. You know, because we're just covered up. Take a picture of the two of us. <laughs> I'm not picture. taking a picture. No, but I mean... I'm, I don't have it set to take pictures. When you finish that, let's take a picture. That's all I'm oh. saying. Don't be so nasty. She was in a walker and she came out and everybody said, do you want to get in line? And she went, I just voted. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was cute. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. This is great. This is terrific. Yeah. You know, New Yorkers are the best. I was at work years ago. I, I, I worked at 54th Street between Broadway and whatever. And we had a blackout. And I was living at 145th at the time. So I had to walk from home to 145th. And everyone was handing out water. I mean, it was so New York. You know, it was just so wonderful to see it. How far more do we have to go here? Well, not far. We're at the school. We are at the school. It's just waiting for to get to the entrance. This almost seems to go up to the corner. I would got out now you've got your card you've got your voting card here's my you've voting got, card well, no, oh, my know. voting card is here yeah yeah and she's got a voting card everybody has a voting card i have a voting card there's mine <laughs> we have no idea what we need and here's where we vote we've made it we've made it congratulations darling an event you made it into an event yeah uh, i have a feeling this is all we need yeah well, we're going inside to vote, and I can't video in there, but I'll I'll let you know what happened. Oh, it's just kind of like well, it's what happened? half in, half out. <laughs> Pulled the full, I was few levers or did whatever. And it adds up. Happy voting day. I feel so good that we did this. I mean, yeah. I really feel good about it. Yeah. We voted. We did it in person. Yeah. And here I am. We go. That's our uh, little uh, day of voting, and I, I thought I'd play that for you. It, uh, it was, um, it's great, you know. Uh, it was a great feeling. It was a great experience. Uh, everybody was so nice, and everybody acted in such a very positive way about voting. So I say to all of you, you know, I, I for years, you know, I went for years not voting, uh, for, especially when I was younger. Uh, I just didn't see any candidate that inspired me enough to get my ass off the couch to go out and vote, all right? 
And then when I came to New York, uh, I saw no reason to vote because, you know, it's a liberal town. They're always going to vote Democratic. I, I don't think there's been a year that I can remember that New York ever came out for the Republican candidate. Always been a very liberal city. And uh, so I always felt that, well, my one vote gets, like, cut down and whittled down into, like, 78 votes or whatever the electoral count is. And so really all I'm doing is uh, giving something for them to compress down. And so I don't feel I'm really, my one vote counts. But, you know, this year... There's another reason for you to vote. Uh, even though it just gets whittled down into a electoral college vote, uh, your one vote does nothing more than do this to Trump. All right? Maybe two of those. You know what this is, right? This is one more than this. Okay. I think that what we want to do is that I want to hurt him. Uh, I have so found him so disgusting as a president, so uh, uh, unrepenting in, in the kind of damage he has done because of his sheer laziness. He wasn't ready. He didn't really want to do the job. He just wanted the job, okay, which is probably the same thing that's been true with his company over the years as well. And, and um, uh, I just feel I want to send him a message that's going to be hurtful to him. And the thing that's going to be hurtful to him is a real drubbing at the, at the, uh, at the voting booth. I think if this country can hand him in just a absolutely terrible electoral pounding, uh, he will be hurt by it. He will feel the sting of it. It will hit him where he lives because he hates that kind of, uh, oh, he's going to make excuses for why he lost. Of course, it was fixed. Because there's no way he could lose. <sighs> give me a break. So anyway, I'm saying go out and vote to give him the finger. Okay? Uh, and the more of you who do it, the more of a finger he gets. And if he takes a real drubbing, which I'm hoping happens, uh, it's going to be very, very demeaning to him. And that's going to be the way I can inflict my personal pain is by my one little vote. And that's the way you can inflict your personal pain. Now, if you happen to think Trump's great, well, I suppose then you should applaud him by giving him your vote so maybe he doesn't get a drubbing. But um, I don't know why after a... Uh, my, here's a question I should ask any of, the, any of the Trump people. And that is, if he were applying for a job and you saw what he did in his last job, would you hire him? I mean, think of him as an employee, which he is really. He doesn't think of himself as an employee. He hates to be the idea of being an employee. He employs other people, and it makes their lives a living hell. But he doesn't like to think of himself that way. He likes to think of himself as uh, the boss, right? But he is nothing more than an employee, and you are his boss. And now it's time for you to give him his, uh, his report, you know, how he did. And whether you want to have them around for another little while to work for you again. And if you feel as an employer that he didn't wasn't quite up to the job and that he was pretty lazy in the way he acquitted himself, then I think uh, maybe you should do what I want to do. And let's give him two of those, right? Uh, and that's what voting against him is going to do. And if you're going to vote for him, think for a second about the job that he did. And, uh, you know, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm, uh, that's my thinking on it. I, what do I have to say any more than that? No. All I'm saying is get out and vote. Really vote. Um, and if they make it tough for you to vote, vote anyway. Get in there and vote. And if you got to wait in the line, I mean, we were lucky. We only had to wait in the line for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, and it was you could see you could see how pleasurable it was. I mean, it becomes kind of a community, you know, and um, so we had a pretty good time. Uh, but you know, if you have to wait in line for two, three hours, do it. Okay, do not let the bastards get away with this and suppressing the vote like they are in places like Texas and so on. In fact, uh, 
Uh, let's go to the uh, Zoom panel. We are not uh, actually, uh, we only have one person ready to be admitted to the Zoom panel. Oh, wait a minute, another person being ready to, to uh, join the Zoom panel. But let me uh, bring that up. There's uh, Charlie Wallace and there's Jeff Stein starting off all things. Charlie, you just wrote something here in Texas. You have to bring in your mail-in ballot to turn it in. If yeah, you if, want you, if you got a mail-in ballot, they won't let you vote in person unless you bring that blank ballot and turn it in so they can make sure you don't vote twice. So they still make it rough on you, right? Oh, yeah. See, they don't what, want what, people voting here. I guess they don't, hear, they don't have computers in Texas. Is that what the uh, problem <laughs> is? Because here, you go and they, give, they send you a thing it's like a, almost like a ticket, okay? And then when you go in, they read the barcode on it. And yes. Your name comes up and where you live and the fact that you're registered and all of that, and then they hand you your ballot. Now, once you've done that, you could mail one in. You could go in the day of the election and try to vote, but it already says you already voted, okay? So no matter yep. what you do, whether you send in the, the mail-in ballot or whatever, it can't be used. So, you know. Uh, yeah, but... You, get, you have to realize that here in Texas, what they did, we were one of the first states that had the voter ID law. Yeah. When they passed the voter ID law, they then shut down over half of the places where you could go get a voter ID. That's called suppression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's suppression of the first water. Uh, you know, that's why I'm saying to people, don't let anybody slow you down. You know, if you got to go wait in line for t three hours because they don't have the facilities in good enough condition that they can do it faster, still do it, okay? Don't let yeah. the bastards get away with it, you know? What else do you have to do during the COVID thing but stand in line, you know? You, what, you going to go to a movie? Yeah. You know, come on. You going to hang out with friends? I doubt it, you know? Just to get out there and, and, and vote. Look who we got here. Somebody who doesn't call that often, but when he does, we uh, feel real good about it. It's Tom Yamaguchi. Hi, oh, there's Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just calling because, um, you know, Charlie was talking about uh, about the, the, the situation in Texas. Actually, it's a, that same way in California. But it sounds like, well, what happens is they actually mail the ballot to us. Mm -hmm. So we would need to bring it in. Otherwise, there would be the chance of voting twice, which yeah. would not be. But, but they actually didn't send you a ballot, Alex. They just sent you a ticket with a barcode. So that could be received. Wait a minute. Hold, 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 hold on a second. Uh, who, 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 is, who is that? Is that John? That's John, John Larkin. John, turn, turn your yeah. camera to begin with, so that it's not in. Uh, so it's it, you're you're sideways. You're sideways. You're sideways, John. What are you using? You're using an iPhone today. You're not using what you normally. Yeah, use. yeah. I'm using an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All How's right. that? Well, yeah, fine. I did just uh, the iPhone somehow won't go into uh, portrait into landscape mode. That's a problem. No, I know. I just, uh, I, I'm using Zoom, so, it's, yeah. you know, I'm just. Yeah. Anyway, I, let's I just, get let's get back to Tom. So, Tom. Yeah, so, 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 so New York has, seems to have, have a very interesting situation there. Because mm -hmm. they said you don't need to actually bring your, your, your ballot in. Mm -hmm. So there's no risk of you actually voting, voting twice. Yeah. I had a ballot. My, uh, the person in front of us had a ballot. I think if you watch the video, uh, a lot of people, uh, whoever's got their audio up, turn it off. Uh, would you? Okay. Um, um, uh, they all had their ballots, but a lot of people had their ballots, but uh, I think they brought it because they thought maybe they needed it for identification or whatever, but all you needed was that thing, you know, that, uh, that ticket that we had with the barcode on it, and that, uh, that, that uh, made you, you know, uh, okay. you know uh, say you were registered, but... Once they swipe that barcode, if you have a mail-in ballot, it's not going to work. You can mail it in, and they'll run it through the thing and say, "Oh, it's a, he's already voted." Uh -huh. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, we yeah. Ha we have computers here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, do you guys want people to vote? Texas, they don't want people to vote. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, it and it uh, you know it worked pre it worked pretty well, um, but. 
you know, I, I, I often wonder in some states how they keep people who have mailed, you know, have a mail-in ballot from voting twice. And, uh, of course, that would be one way of doing it, that if you want to vote and you have a mail-in ballot, then you have to bring the mail-in ballot with you. And I guess once you get there, they take the mail-in ballot away from you, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that you yeah. can't. Yeah, so so basically, I, you know, as I, I've worked a number of elections as, as you know, as an election officer. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Stopper has down in San Benito County. Yeah. And uh, and so we what we would do is give everyone a provisional ballot that mm -hmm. doesn't have a their their vote by mail ballot to surrender at the polls. Yeah. So so then the provisional ballot is counted if they do not receive that other ballot that was sent, you know, in the mail. Yeah. I, so I, that's the, yeah, I was joking as we were walking in that I said, well, you know, you can always just drop your ballot off in the front here. I said, I guess it's in the only thing that's here is a garbage can. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess that's where you throw it. You know. um, but, you know, it's amazing because there were people you know, like a woman in front of us. She had a she had a ballot. We had a ballot. And somehow she still wanted to go in and just vote traditionally. You know, sure. you sure. get that thing and just fill it out, even though it was only about maybe four little spaces you had to fill in to, to finish it because there weren't many people on there. And then uh, just, um, you know, put it in the machine, have it read it, and leave. You know, and you felt, you saw Marjorie. She said, I feel so good about this. I feel, she was so happy about doing it, you know. I think more so than any t other time in her life that she's voted, you know. Somehow to, this time we really felt a sense of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and also because I said it, I never felt my one vote really counted, okay, especially in New York. If it, I'd say it would count in Texas. I would count in South Carolina. In New York, it doesn't count. This is a liberal state. Somebody else is going it, to, it's just not going to do anything else but be Trump in, in New York. Mm -hmm. But I felt, especially this time, this was my way of giving them the finger to Trump. The more he gets drubbed, the higher the vote count nationally, the more he's going to feel diminished and feel, uh, and you know, he's such an egotist. This is something, this is how you hurt him. This is how you hurt him good. Yeah. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Well, in addition, there's more than, than, than the president on, on the ballot. There's a lot of local races and, yeah. and there's, and a lot of these races that, you know, they don't, you know, you know just even a few few votes can, can make a big difference in whether somebody wins or loses, comes in third or fourth, you know, if there's like three, three seats on a school board, you know, yeah. we didn't have anything. Uh, we didn't have anything like that. We had like, I don't know, city bookkeeper or something. I don't know. There were just some minor, uh, two minor things. That, and one of them, there was only one guy running, so he was going to win in any way. So, you, yeah. just, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if you have any propositions on no, your ballot. No, we, we, had, we, no, had, we, we had, had a lot. Really. Okay. Yeah. Lot. But as I said, there's always there's always some local race, you know, assembly person, uh, well, your congressperson every two yeah, uh, years. I was amazed but, at how, how sparse this ballot was. I think there were only about five positions, including president and vice president, maybe, yeah, five that we had to vote for, and they really weren't anything major, you know. They weren't even, I don't think they were even city councilmen or anything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you're right. In every other state, there are propositions. Uh, in, in a lot of states, there are senators running, okay, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's very important. We didn't have any of that here in New York this time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe was Ocasio-Cortez running again for Congress out in Yes, the, yeah. Out oh, in yeah, every, every two years. years. Yeah. yeah, and she'll, yeah. Pro she'll probably win that one. Uh, they like her out there. And, yeah. uh, you know, but, I mean, the, 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 there were a lot of those coming up. We didn't even have a congressman come up here, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Could I just add on one other thing also, you know, especially as someone who's worked at the polls, mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's actually a, a community building thing. There's a there's like you feel more connected to your community when when you're there and there's and, and other people in your community are gathering there and they're doing something. It's it's that's a good positive thing too. You know, you feel more like a sense of community. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I I think it was really uh, 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 as I say, Marjorie 
had this, this, she was just so invigorated by what she had just done. And, you know, it was nothing more than something she's done any number of times in her life. Uh, but this time, it, it meant something. This one, this is maybe the most decisive battle that I've seen for president in my lifetime. I, you mm -hmm. know, I, and I remember some, some hard ones, you know, I, when Reagan ran, I mean, and when the Bushes ran. Uh, no, I, the, I didn't want any of them either. But it wasn't like this one. This one was, we got to get this guy out of here because our life depends on it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and when they say, vote like your life depended on it, well, it does, your life does depend on it. Yeah. Uh, th this guy's done a, such a bad job of handling this crisis. And, and that's where I find him a stupid idiot, okay? Is that he could have won this election just hands down if he just did something. It wasn't even something difficult to do. You can pass it off to somebody else who knows what they're doing, like Dr. Fauci, and say, you make the policy. Yeah, but he or couldn't get him. Specifically, yeah, yeah, more specifically, if he had responded appropriately to the pandemic, yeah, he would have won re-election. Everybody, everybody realized it's that it was. It, it, if I were a political pundit, and hi there, Tony, and and I was hired to give him advice, I would say, "This is your perfect opportunity. Seize it, you know, and run with it. Do everything you can to stop this virus." Uh, and if you don't know how to do it, let other people tell you how to do it. Which, But he can't bring himself to do that. That's not the kind of person he is. And so if he loses this election, it's no one's fault but his own. You know, he was handed a perfect way to win the election. But that's what Jared said the other day, right, with Woodward, saying let the governors suffer through it, let them have to deal with it, and then you come in there and save the economy. And that's what his plan was. Yeah, yeah. And and today the, we found that the uh, the uh, GDP went up thirty three percent. And so he's going around bragging about how it went up thirty three percent. But the fact was that it only went up thirty three percent because it went down something like forty six percent. Okay. <laughs> he's still yeah. not back to the job losses that we. Had oh no, back in March no, and April. no. He says, "Oh, we we just added so many jobs." Well, yeah, okay. So now we only have seventeen million people are out of work. You know, I mean, uh, uh, there are so many ways this guy could have won this election by just the appearance of doing something. Uh, but then he says yesterday, one of my biggest accomplishments is stopping COVID. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what a fucker. What? We had the second highest day on record today. Really? Highest day? Yeah. Well, well we, you guys, we had the, the, US had the highest. The highest date nationally. Yeah. 87,000 plus, still counting. It's on right. the other side. It's on the other side. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what you, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, from it's seven o'clock today to seven o'clock today, we had 91,000. Yeah. Oh I mean, I, uh, uh, you, you know, I mean, I just think he is, he's the biggest moron ever. I mean, he, here he was, he was literally, if I were president, I would say, well, look, this is a horrible thing and we got to do something about it. But I would also say, hey, I just been handed the way I'm going to win the next election. Mm -hmm. I'm going to comport myself very well in this situation and deal with this thing. And, you know, but he didn't. He didn't. Did he, you see, he just. Did you see the split screen today? The split screen. They had Biden talking in Florida and Trump's group. You know mm -hmm. Trump. Yeah. And they had no masks, and everybody was all squeezed in. And they had uh, Biden had all the cars there, and everybody had masks on. They're finding. They're people. they're finding. They well, they found that on uh, certain people who attended a lot of his other ones, like seven people, wound up with COVID. But that wasn't what they found out. They but they did is they matched the rise in incidences in that county against the incidences in the state and said there was a perceptible rise of at least 25% in cases in that city, uh, which could be directly attributed to the fact that at the same time he was holding his, oh. his rally, you know. Yeah, they were using four weeks of data. So they went back four weeks and they were watching the cases. Mm -hmm. And then like a week or two after the Trump rally, they saw a spike. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of that is not necessarily people who went to the rally. 
That's people yeah. that the other people who were at the rally infected, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, what he does is he's holding these super spreader events, and then he's turning around and he's saying, uh, "Hey, uh, uh, look at uh, look at Biden. He's just playing to a bunch of cars." Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm supposed to hate him because he's being responsible. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And, um, and now what the Republicans are doing, um, I think it was, uh, uh, what's his name over at, uh, over at Fox? Uh, uh, the guy I used to be on with. Uh, oh, Tucker. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. Carlson. Uh, amazing how the, the mind plays tricks on me and it won't let me remind, remember the name Tucker <laughs> Carlson. <laughs> Uh, he um, he had the guy on yesterday who said he knew uh, that Hunter Biden was doing this and that, and he referred to his father as the boss. You don't refer to him as yeah. Biden because of the blah, 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 blah. You know that guy. Well, he went on there, and then when Tucker was supposed to come forward with mm -hmm. some proof that all of this was true, somehow the proof has disappeared. Oh, lost in the mail. Just am I right? What, what happened? You said, "Well, we we don't we can't find it mysteriously. It's disappeared. Where's the fix? Who stole it? You know, uh, God, you know they're trying this last minute thing, and nobody's grabbing on to it. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, John Larkin, who tonight is yeah. named iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I read today in the Daily Beast that. Uh, U UPS has said, hey, we found it. We've got it. We've got that in material. So I don't know if Tucker is going to disclose it. But, I mean, who ships stuff, you know, documents on UPS? Why don't you just email it? You well, know? I was tuning into Fox today. And I have been tuning into Fox lately because, quite frankly, I want to get all the news that Trump's going to win. Okay? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I want to I hear all the reasons why Trump is winning. Okay? <laughs> And one of the reasons they, they stated that Trump, well, they, one of the things they were complaining about was this guy who was building the wall for Trump at about a foot a year uh, 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 wrote some kind of tweet about how the wall's going up and how we're going to protect it from looters and rapists and uh, whatever. And uh, Twitter uh, deleted his post. Mm -hmm. And he started complaining. And, of course, over at Fox, they're going, how, see, how can Twitter do this? How can Twitter do this? They're censoring, blah, 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 blah. You know how Twitter can do it? They own the company, okay? <laughs> and they've decided that they have a set of rules. And if you don't abide by them, they don't, you know, and if something looks like it's fake and, it's, you know, they're very careful about this, they'll take it off. And do they have the right to take it off? Hey, if somebody said, I love Trump, that's all they wrote, and they wanted to take it off, it's their right to do it. Okay? And, and I'm, I'm saying this to Republicans because Republicans would say, yeah, they own the company. They can do whatever they want. That's what their answer would be on a lot of other occasions. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I, I, I listen to this, and they're all moaning and groaning, and I'm going, they own these companies. <laughs> you know? If they want, if they, you know, I mean, I hate Facebook. I got a thing from Facebook. What was it yesterday about something I had put up? Oh, I know. I one night on the show, I ran a White House video from the Obama administration of the of the um, the uh, well, the the what's the room where they go and they do all the the uh, situation situation room. room. Okay. Oh, really? God, my mind is just trashed the last couple of days. The, the Situation Room. And uh, you may remember me playing that video because I thought it was fascinating. I thought, uh, how many of us have ever seen the inside of the Situation Room except in, you know, Dr. Strangelove, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, you know, and so you, you really, um, I thought it was a good thing to play for you guys. Plus, it comes from the White House, so therefore it's not exactly in public domain, but it belongs to the public, belongs to you and me. We bought and paid for that yeah. video. Uh, and they said, oh, uh, History, some company called History, I don't know, maybe History Channel, whatever, said it's theirs. And I figured, well, I'm going to write them and just say, look, it can't be theirs because it's uh, the White House put it out. You know, mm -hmm. they may, I may have gotten it from maybe a, a, a feed that they had, but it's not, you know, 
they don't have the right to say we have copyright on this and you can't run it. And then I go to the thing and it says, okay, and they, do you, why do you disagree? And I wrote down and then they said, okay, by filing this, uh, if, if it turns out to be false, we can drop you from Facebook. <laughs> so I'm not going to take the chance right over a lousy little video that, quite frankly, they just said, oh, well, you just can't monetize it. You know, and I went fine. But I wanted to protest it because how dare they say that something is from the White House. It's listed. The White House, right up in the corner. The White House is copywritten. So, I mean, I hate Facebook. And I, I hate I, YouTube for some of the same reasons, you know. Um, um, even though I love YouTube, I do most of my video watching now on YouTube rather than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, I find them a little draconian. And uh, who's left? Let's see here. We got Facebook. We got oh, and then there's. Well, there's is there any other company now? That's that's about mm -hmm. it. You know, Twitter. Instagram. There's Twitter. Twitter. Mm -hmm. and, I, and so far as Twitter is concerned, I never really use Twitter that much anyway. Mm -hmm. I just found Twitter to be, you know, it's for morons. I mean, what you can only write two hundred and four. <laughs> you can only write write two hundred and forty characters. I got more important things to say than that, you know, and uh, uh, maybe. And then when you read somebody's tweet, it's like blah, 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 hashtag, blah, 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 hashtag, blah, 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 have hashtag. I just want it, when I write something, I just want it to be one flowing thing, not so-and-so hashtag, so-and-so hashtag. You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous, just absurd. Uh, but yes, uh, John, you're in the dark uh, now. You better clap. Yeah, <laughs> but it actually looks pretty cool with the TV. I'm getting light from the TV. Oh, okay. And, but, um, sure. I mean... Trump's such, you know, such a hypocrite. I mean, if it wasn't for Twitter, he would never fucking be anything. So what's he complaining about? Yeah. You know? By the way, turn your yeah. light on because even though it, it's yeah. nice mood lighting, you know, right. we, we, we can't see your face. You know? Your black shirt looks like you have a floating head. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, in case anybody's watching and, uh, and, and has the ability to do so, uh, we, we need somebody on the show to call us who's working in their backyard. Okay, yeah. so I just, I just wanted to, just wanted to. I, would want, I watched that. I go, day. What? I can go in the garage, work on my car. I was thinking that night. I was watching you. He got old man or something. I was watching it on my computer, grading some books, and I heard he got old man. I was watching his show live. Yeah, he he, he got in my face because I called him a trumper. Yeah, that's. I was like, uh oh, there's a little argument here. Well, I know. It, it, I only missed two days, Thursday and Friday last week, and there was Phil conversation, and there was the breathing. Well, we haven't got Robert here again tonight, but Robert really just, you know, I, when he wrote a thing on here, mm. uh, putting down everybody for, you know, uh, what's what's with all the Trump bashing, you know, again, and I we yep. just he just laid into him. He just said, you know. We're not Trump. You know, it's not Trump bashing. It's, it's Trump truthing. I went around the panel at that point, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah. "Would somebody here, would anybody like to defend Trump or say something?" Let's go around the panel. And everybody say something nice about Trump. And there was dead <laughs> silence. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was people didn't even want to do it as a game to play. You know, <laughs> you know what I was going to ask, Alex? I was in the pizzeria, right? Move my mask, or get my mom and me some pizza. Yeah, And I don't get into politics, but I'm listening to people who I kind of know not really very well. And they always be like, oh, but you misinterpreted what he said. So I didn't even want to talk because I haven't talked to these people in years. These people I went to school with. And I'm like, yeah, I, I got to go. My brother's white. And I says, why do they always make up like, well, you're misinterpreting how he's saying it. It's like the guy's an, I said, the guy's an asshole. You can say whatever you want. Well, you're look, I, when you're when you're president of the United States, and especially when you're running for office, don't say anything that you don't really mean. Okay, don't even say anything in jest, unless you know that it can't be taken wrong. Uh, so when he says something <laughs> like, "Women, why don't you like me?" Now, what do you think? And they that, say you know? you're pleading. He goes, "Well, I'm. I was only joking." That's his way of getting out of it. Well, you're running for president. No time for jokes right now. Yeah. And then he said, Tony Fauci's an idiot. How is this guy an idiot? He was oh, a God. But yeah, but, I mean, he just looks out of his ass. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it, it would be nice if you could easily say um, um, that he uh, uh, was joking about something. I'd like to think he was joking about everything. 
but unfortunately, the, the jokes were deadly, and that's the problem. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, I uh, I just think that I I, I uh, was looking for something that we could say positive about him. I mean, is he? You know, I, I guess the pardoning of some people was a good yeah. deal. You know. Who, Sheriff Arpaio? No, not Arpaio. I'm yeah. talking about people, actual people, actual people, people who were in prison. Of drug, drug crimes. Yeah, you he, know? he pardoned oh, him, like that. but he didn't get him let go out of prison. Okay, so. But uh, here's the question I pose to, to us, the Alex, and even everybody. My brother said this to me. We were just talking. He says, can you imagine now four years later almost Look at the state of the country. You have people not believing the news. You got rioting in the streets. This is all under his watch. I'll show you what, yep. an, I'll show you what an idiot. I'll show you what an idiot I am. I mean, the night he got elected, I, Marjorie woke up. I told the story and said, hmm. so what happened? I said, Trump won. I was in shock. And she out. said, you're kidding me. And she, yeah, I said, I no, like, I'm not kidding you. Myself. And she said, oh, my God. And I said, well, <laughs> you know. Let's just wait. I mean, how much can he fuck up in four years? That's, that's what everybody said. <laughs> I really, I said that. Yeah. Boy, was I a dummy, because I figured that this country was impervious to being destroyed by somebody like Trump, but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. He made this virus like a civil war against the states. Yeah. He made it, uh, he, he took the coronavirus, to begin with, I, I, who, whose line was it? Uh, that uh, I think it was Trump, it was Obama's, that the problem with Trump is he hates the coronavirus because it's getting a bit more press than he is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, um, but there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, yeah. when he gets up there and he goes, coronavirus, coronavirus, after the election, you're not going to hear a thing about it. Oh, oh really? <laughs> Give me a break. Come on, be smart. You don't you think this is going away by November third, about by five, Wednesday, five days from now it's just gonna disappear? Like Everybody uh, yeah, yes, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, it's just more projection from Trump because when he had all those uh, the caravans coming up from oh, you man, know, that, yeah. Mexico <laughs> or whatever, that went away completely after the election in 2018. You never heard another word about it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's projecting what he did in 2018. He's saying well, that's what the Democrats are doing now. Yeah. So well, you know what he's doing. What? I think what he's trying to do, and you're right, Alex. He's throwing the hail mary pass. I'm waiting this weekend for more civil disobedience. There's going to be stuff. I think he's playing that in his little when the door closes. He's sitting mm -hmm. down saying, "We got this." Well, you know who I hate. I hate. I hate. To, I to hate burn some stuff. We got this. I hate the people who are burning and looting, and I hate them for this reason. That they just give him some, mm -hmm. uh, some something to talk about and something to yeah. yell and rant about. I think really right mean. now, uh, if somebody, if a black person gets shot and killed, yes, you should get out in the street and protest. You should state your case uh, to the American public, but don't do it violently and don't loot. I mean, I don't know what looting has to do with civil grievances anyway. Nothing. You know, um, but. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a, new, it's a new form of Black Friday. I don't know. You know, right. rush into the store, grab the stuff, and get out of there. I uh, want a new Nintendo. All right, let's go. Uh, I need a new Nintendo, yeah. For my room, I got one yeah. in the front. I, I, but I, you know, I mean, I just think, I mean, you may disagree. Do you agree with me on this, Tom, that, I mean, looting has no place in any of this? No, it certainly doesn't. And I, I'll just say that it's, a, it's an emotional response. And when people just emo act emotionally and not, you know, don't take into, you know, reason into consideration, you know, you know, that a lot of what can happen is, is just counterproductive. Well, and, you, and you say yeah. it feeds right into what Trump wants yeah. people to do that he can, that he can, that he can campaign against, you know, with his well, when, when, law and order, which he stole from Richard Nixon anyway. Yeah. Well, in the <laughs> old days when uh, people, when they loot, when uh, they rioted, and they would burn down a business. Many times the business that was burnt down was a business that was hated in the community, you know, oh. and it was looked upon, uh, it was a white-owned business that for years had oppressed the minority, minorities in that neighborhood by doing things like 
the day the welfare checks came out, they raised the prices on food in the store, yeah. you know, yeah. and things like that. And they knew that, and so they went, okay, this is our chance to get even with this son of a bitch. And so <laughs> yeah. that was understandable in those days. But looting right now, going into a Best Buy and looting a Best Buy, I, I don't know what that has to do with the fact that George Floyd got killed by a cop, uh, right. murdered by a cop. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 do, it really doesn't have anything to do with it. And it only yeah. diminishes the demonstrator's yeah. cause. That's the other problem. Right. Is Tom, Tom is the savvy, big-time politics guy. Tom, do you see any chance in winning? Of course. You do what? What percentage? He could, he could you certainly, he could certainly win once again. You know the, the, you know, we you have to take it, you know, state by state. And, and if he just ekes out enough, enough uh, votes like he did in in twenty sixteen, he could lose the the popular vote by millions like he did in twenty sixteen and still win, yeah. win the uh, the electoral college. So that's that why to? that's why we got a campaign in those in those swing states and 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 just. Everywhere, just just I actually blogged about it. I, I made one final blog post for my my blog for, about the election. If you want to read it, go to tomyamaguchi.blog, and I'll explain. I'll just spell out why I think we really need to vote in, in large numbers. And because how many votes are they going to throw out, Tom? That's what I'm worried about. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Tom. This year, we're a little smarter than we were four years ago. You know, well, to begin with, Hillary was playing a lousy ground game. If she was playing a good ground game, she would have been counting electoral votes. And she wasn't. She was counting total votes. So, yeah. were, so were the uh, pollsters as well. Now all that is out the window. Now it's all, it, are they going to win this state and get this many electoral votes? Or are they going to win mm -hmm. that state? Yeah. And yeah. Plus, another there are other factors too that was was out of out of our control, and that was one of them was the Comey letter that came out just a oh, week before really the election, cool. and and we were reminded that you know uh, that you know four years ago today the New York Times was blaring these headlines of oh how this is you know really destroying Clinton and all, and it really did suppress the vote, but, and and I think that's that's the one thing that we have going this year that the Republicans were a very successful in, re, mm -hmm. in, in suppressing the vote, discouraged, getting people discouraged. I don't, I, I don't yeah. It was a combination of the Republicans and a lot of help for the Russians. Tom, the Russians I, might, I, might di I, I might disagree with you in, to this extent, that I think <clears throat> the person that l lost Hillary's um, run for the White House was Hillary. I think it was a badly run campaign. And she was not a great candidate. Biden is showing, and I, believe me, when Biden got nominated, I went, well, we'll have to wait and see. I hope he can do it, you know. Biden has run a pitch-perfect campaign. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been one single mistake, would you say? Yeah. Very minor, if anything. But, yeah, you're right. I, and, unfortunately, part of the part of the Hillary's... Uh, liability is the fact that, that she was a woman and she was, you know, this person that, you know, people have described as polarizing, you know, she, people loved her or they, or they absolutely hate her. I mean, I mean, a, a lot of women, and I said, I, 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 you know, when I was doing phone calling for Hillary Clinton, it was like 80, 90% of, of that, in that calling room were women and they were just fired up. They were excited about having the first woman president. Hmm. But at the same time, there are a whole bunch of other people that, you know, and a lot of this relates to misogyny, actually. I, well, I, well, I, I really think that there's a lot of a lot of the baggage that was heaped on Hillary is just the fact that she that she is a woman. Hillary made a good candidate. But if she was qualified, she would have made a good president. Why? Because she'd done almost every job you needed yeah. to do to, to, to get ready for that job. She was more ready for it than Bill was. She was more definitely more ready for it than Obama was when he took over. She was ready. The only thing was she was not a good campaigner. And and but she did just remember, she won that election. Mm -hmm. Fair and square, she should have had the electoral college, but that wasn't the game, the ground game she was playing. And that's mm -hmm. where she lost. She won she won by three million votes. 
She won the popular vote, hands down, no question. The pollsters had her at 2.5 million. So yeah. actually, she exceeded their expectations, and the pollsters were right. But again, like Hillary, they were not looking at electoral college. Yes, uh, who held their hand up? Somebody had their oh. hand up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian. When, when you do the calls, are you calling Democrat, like, voted, you know, uh, registered people? Or are you, how yeah. does that work? Yeah, in this particular, in, in these particular call banks, uh, we are calling Democrats. You're just making sure that they get out and put just to, Yeah, the idea is to make sure that they vote. Many of the people I'm calling, especially, well, in Arizona is where I've been mostly calling. I did call people in Georgia, too. But uh, pe the people have already put their ballots in. Wow. Uh, so that's that's very encouraging. People have actually have already voted. So, yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be, um, I think that, look, I, I think Biden's going to win it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at everything and I'm seeing the, the writing on the wall. And uh, quite frankly, I think that the pollsters are probably more right than wrong this time. OK, he's ahead in Florida by three votes, which is within the margin of error. But he's Biden's ahead by three. Well, actually, four, four points. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and he doesn't even have to win Florida. He's down there working his ass off down there, and he doesn't have to win Florida. Looks like he's going to get Wisconsin, you know. So, I mean, it, it looks good, all right? But we still, don't, we still don't know, you know. I mean, it could surprise us, but I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to be, in fact, I quite frankly think it isn't a question of how much, if Biden's going to win or not, but by how much. So and I think so. that may wind up, up being the big story the next day is how many people voted for Biden and how, what a drubbing Trump took. You yes. know what's going to be great, Alex? What? If it's a landslide, I'm going to stay up all night. I want to see that losing speech. Oh, you're not never going to see oh. it. You're never going to see it. He's not going to make a speech. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll never con he won't concede. No, not at all. Yes, Tom, you had your hand up. Actually, well, you mentioned Wisconsin. I forgot, you know, the big story this morning. I don't know what's happened since then, but... Um, but uh, the Republican Party in, in Wisconsin lost, what, $3 million from their account because <laughs> of a phishing scam? Oh, really? Uh, you hear that? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like the, somebody who was in control of the money got, uh, got tricked into by some from hackers into giving all the money away. <laughs> he thought he was paying some some bills, and uh, it turned out they they lost. It's like three million dollars. Was that was that Biden money? Trump, it was Trump Biden campaign in in, in oh, Wisconsin. Oh, the Trump campaign. Oh, well, Trump, 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 Trump can't afford it. You know, <laughs> he can't afford it. Right, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He's a he's a multi billionaire. He can he, <laughs> he can't <laughs> afford it. He really can't. They are they <laughs> are cash poor in this campaign. Yeah. Where is yeah. the, where's the taxes? We're never going to see the taxes. What taxes? Trump's taxes, remember? Oh, oh, oh we're, we're going to see it when we see the health plan. Yeah, he yeah. came. He came. Yeah. It's going to be there. It's going to be. It's going to be just in one big package: health plan, tax. Everything's there. Yeah. Nothing's here. <laughs> yeah. My mother wants. Did you to see? Die. Did you see? Did you watch uh, Leslie Stahl on sixty Minutes? I saw it. With Trump, mm -hmm. I mean, to begin with, I. That's the one man I don't want to ever have to interview. I mean, that's got to be just totally frustrating. I, Would I, you have cursed him out, Alex? I saw him being interviewed by, by Chris Wallace, and I felt sorry for Chris Wallace, <laughs> which I didn't think I was ever capable of feeling sorry for. Uh, I felt sorry for him because he was so frustrated by trying to get a straight answer out of Trump. This is why, Tom, as you know, I didn't like to interview politicians. Because they never answer the question you're asking them. They always yeah. are answering a question that they want to answer. So right. they will take whatever question you have, twist in their first couple of words, uh, something which just twists it towards what they want to talk about, and then they go into a diatribe about their platform and so on. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, I think your story. I think your story about Jerry Brown. You know, two separate interviews really tells. Oh yeah. It, you know? Yeah, yeah. When I interviewed him when he was running for president. It was one of those kind of interviews, you know? And then when I had him back, 
He came mm-hmm. back on the show and he started doing these diatribes against the highway patrol and he started just going after everybody and everything. And during the break, I looked at him and I said, uh, in fact, I may have said it on the air. I said, Jerry, why weren't you like this when you were running for president? I would have voted for you in a heartbeat. And he looked at me and he said, I was running for president and I had handlers and they told me what I should say and not say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what does that say about running for president? But Biden has been pitch perfect, I think. You know, I, I can't think of a major mistake he's made. He's had a few little gaffes here and there, and they, they make a big deal out of them on Fox. Oh, look, he's a doddering old man because he said 2019 when it was really 2020 when that happened. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But the minor, minor stuff. Uh, but, I mean, he's really just been pitch perfect don't you feel tom i mean i i you know he yeah, I think he's been, yeah he's been quite good you know I, he, I, he's got the whole thing about looking straight at the camera and talking to the american public and 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 leveling with you like he's talking directly to you good work you know? yeah and I, I think i think and i mentioned this before i think the the the, the fact that it was such a very crowded field mm-hmm. that the, that the people really had to get get better at campaigning in order to survive. And I think that's probably, if I were to say the difference between now and 2016 is unfortunately, if if Elizabeth Warren had, won, had run in 2016, mm-hmm. even if Hillary Clinton got the nomination, I think she probably would have been a much stronger and better candidate of having that opposition. But unfortunately, you know, people like Elizabeth Warren decided you know, well, it's her time. I'll just let her have it. And unfortunately, that was a mistake. Well, I think that he, that what he's doing, what he's done is he's played himself as the alternative to Trump. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's played himself as the reasonable, you know, your your reasonable father, you know, who's uh, going, okay, son, you know, but let's be re- realistic about it. Let's be civil about it. And he he. He's been very careful to just be Joe, you know, and and look at that camera and say, you know, you're going to miss somebody at your dining room table tonight. And that's because they died of COVID. And who's responsible for that? You know, and he's just he's done everything perfectly. And I think in that he's become Teflon to Trump, who just all he can do is the normal bashing against Biden. And and everybody's tired of hearing that. And. Uh, uh, on top of that, um, if I went to see a comedian who I saw four years ago and he was doing the same act, I'd walk out. Well, what's Trump doing? He's doing the same act. He he does. He's even still going uh, uh, lock her up for Hillary. I mean, come on, Hillary is a new, new, uh, four years ago. Let Hillary go. Let Obama yeah. go. I mean, this is the guy who's confronting Trump. Trump isn't even funny. funny. He's not funny. At least I don't find him funny. Does anybody here find him funny? I think I think at one point I found him funny because I found him ridiculous, you know. And uh, but you know, also I think, and this is the one thing that he didn't count on, where his miscalculation caught up with him, that over the last four years he has worked his ass off at only one thing. He worked harder at this than any other aspect of being president to force himself into the news cycle every single day. And now, after that going on for four years, we've got two things going on right now. I've got COVID fatigue, uh, COVID fatigue and I've got Trump fatigue. I'm tired of hearing his fucking voice. I don't mm-hmm. want to hear it. And if, if nothing more, I just want a world without Donald Trump dominating the news every day. And let the president go to work and do what he's got to do and not spend all his time on the couch using his Twitter account. He also keeps complaining everywhere he goes. He complains, it's too hot. Well, I don't know why I'm out here. Because of coronavirus, I had to come out here and see you guys. You know, yeah. and it's too cold. Well, I don't he, know why I'm in the, the, it, it, the famous one. Is I don't know why I'm here in Erie, Pennsylvania. If there wasn't a coronavirus, I wouldn't be here. Exactly. Oh, well, good. Then, then you mean we shouldn't vote for you because you don't give a crap about us? They clap and he hates us. He don't want to be here. What the fuck are you even doing here? They got nothing better to do. Yeah. It's almost like these people are stupid. 
<laughs> well, I, I, what, I, what bothers me, I think, was is making fun at people wearing masks. I found that to be, in, in this, you know, I mean, come on. Turning masks into a political issue? I'm sorry. You know. They're, they're, they're showing uh, one of the places that had, you know, some, some huge hangar there. They had a line of cars out there, and they're doing all the, you know, all the testing. And the guy who was running that place said, we see 80 cases a day of people with COVID, you know, after they're tested. And they had 100 people or so many people working there. They said not one of these people have come down with COVID. And they're interacting with those people, but they had a mask and the face shield. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, uh, what was it? Um, it, it yeah, it, it's just that the whole uh, thing with just, demonizing the wearing of masks. I mean, they were, they were having a demonstration the other day where they were burning masks. Burn <laughs> Come on. You know, they, at, they at least give them, the, the people, give them to the people who need them, the, you know, the, the hospital workers, you know. Don't waste a goddamn mask. I rewash mine. Yeah. Oh, I got one from my mother's thing. Hey, I got a rewash from the bone. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. iPhone. Did, did you... Um... Uh, did, did anybody see uh, how we introduced uh, Martha McSally at that uh, rally down Oh, in yes. Did you, did you, like, you catch like, it? Yeah, yeah, nobody cares what you got to say. Well, no, 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 no. Did he say that? But what he said was, Martha McSally is here. Is that her name, Get up here, get up here. Come, come on, on, get up here. Quick, quick, quick. Now, now, now. Quick, 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 quick. We don't have time. Come on, get up here quick. And he said, nobody cares what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, I would have said, "Fuck you." Then a few minutes later, he introduced a male, who pretty much yeah. in the same position. She's a senator, and he wasn't even as big as that. I think he was a congressman or something. And uh, uh, he treated him very respectfully. Yeah. But yeah. the woman, get up here fast! Come on, quick, quick, quick! Do it right now! Let's not waste time! Come on, where is she? Come on, get up here! I, you know, I, I, I don't He's look. Low life. He's I don't look. Horrible. I don't understand. And I guess this is the intelligent part of me. <clears throat> I don't understand why anybody would vote for this guy. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I can understand. For the lulls. I can understand you hate <laughs> Biden, and nobody's telling you to vote for Biden. But how can you pull the lever, fill in the you space know why? for, for, for you Trump? know why they vote for him? Why? For the lulls. The lulls? Yeah, that's that's an internet term for laughing out loud. Oh, well, I see. Because they're just, just fucking trolls vote for him just to fuck things up. Jeffrey, you, know, you had your hand up. He's into something that's, that's kind of like yeah. strange. I don't even know. Je I don't want to say they're all inherently racist because that would be a stupid statement, I think. I just think, <laughs> that's stupid. I just think you want to know why Jim Jones made them drink the Kool-Aid? Here's his people right there. Yeah, they, exactly. so yeah. they, like, he, they will do anything he says and yeah. make excuses for him. Uh, Jeff, had, Jeff had Jeff had his hand up. Yeah. Tony Jeff had his hand up. Yes, I'm Jeff. Sorry. I I think Trump is trying to lose at this point. Well, I, I wouldn't think, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, dissuade you from feeling that way. No, uh, I, I felt I felt win. I felt that when he was running against uh, uh, Hillary, that he really wanted to lose, so he the did. next yeah, day yeah. he could start yeah, you know the yeah. Trump news. He never network. thought he'd win. Yeah, and then he had plans. He had uh, you know he had uh, I think what's his name was still alive. The guy who was the head of Fox and got thrown out uh, at Roger yeah, Ailes. Yeah. He had Roger yeah. Ailes ready to start the Trump news network. <laughs> yeah. You know, so he was going to do that the next day. That's what he's going to do the next day here. You know, yeah, there will be a Trump News Network. It'll probably be OAN, and they will rebrand it, okay? Because yeah. the company already bought, Trump's company already bought into OAN. Mm. You know, so. Yeah. But you, you, you know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think he wants to lose, though, now, because once he got the taste of uh, the power and all the, uh, you know, the accoutrements of being president, he doesn't want to let that go. I think he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be out of power, and he doesn't want to lose because the next yeah. step when he loses is a pair of handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> oh you know, yeah, for sure. Or or for sure. or at the very least, a lot of legal litigation against him. Not yeah. Not for anything he did in office, but for you know, 
Mis- malfeasance else. of running yeah. a company. What about yeah. some guy named Boris trying to collect four hundred million dollars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boris. In, uh, Ivan. Oh, oh. Ivan Tax- Boris. Ivan and Boris going to collect their four hundred million dollars. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it, it, it's uh, you know, I think that he basically feels that uh, the presidency shielded him from a lot of of, of, yeah. of uh, probably from divorce too. Uh, you know, it shielded him from a lot of things. I'm making a bet here that if he loses the election within five years, maybe four, the- there will be a for sale sign on Trump Tower. <laughs> yeah. I think he may sell that off. Uh, I, I, think have he, to. I think he's going to have to. Yeah. So yeah. Have to. yeah. He, uh, all those golf courses are losing money big time. They're losing so much money. And, uh, you well, know. I mentioned last night that when the Chinese, the Japanese, I think ambassador, a Japanese prime minister came mm-hmm. to the United States, he had him stay at Mar a Lago and they held a, a dinner for him at Mar Mar a Lago and everything. You, the American taxpayer, were charged a lot of money for that, you know, for sleeping accommodations and this and that and the other thing. You know what you also got charged for? Three dollars for every glass of water. Yeah. That was on the bill. Yeah. Uh, Trump water. Trump water. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you go, I mean, this is ridiculous, you know. I mean, how do you, what the gall of the guy? Jeez almighty, you know. Um, He's looked upon the the United States as his personal piggy bank. Yep. Uh, This is, you know, so, I mean, we just so want him out of there. You know, and we're hoping that it's going to be, you know, happen real soon. You think there's a chance he could win, right, Tom? Well, sure, of course, there's 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 a chance he could win. Yeah, I mean, you but, know, but what they said, you know, the way the electoral college is set up, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it there's a lot of states where it's going to be close, but if you know Trump. Just to, you know, I mean, as I said, in 2016, it was like it was a matter of 77,000 votes across three states. So, yeah. but you know, I, I I think that the answer is is if you're really worried about whether whether uh, Trump's going to win, or not, go out and campaign, donate. You've got just five, you, you have, well, four you have more most, days left to do it. You, have, you know, you but have, you get them, you involved. Have, you you have, know, get the phone bank, a text bank, whatever. Uh, in in yeah. lacking that. The one thing you can do is vote, okay? Yeah. And and um, uh, a lot of you people out there don't want to get to go to a phone bank, and you don't want to do what Tom does, or you know Kevin is out doing mm-hmm. uh, this week, which is helping run polling places and so on. That's why he's missing in action here. Uh, uh, you know, you, we, you really want him, uh, uh, you re- but if you can't do that, you don't have to do that. You know, nobody says you, that's that's what you have to do. That's what the the good guys like Tom do. What guys like me do is I just vote, and that's all you have to do. And in most cases, it's walking to your closest school and voting. And believe me, you wear a mask. Everybody's required to wear a mask inside. I didn't feel at any moment that I was coming into contact with germs. I wish I had videotaped inside, but I probably would have been told to stop, uh, because. Uh, everybody was distanced away from each other. There was a, a plexiglass panel between me and the person who was working the polling station. I put down my little card, and the barcode was red, and then it was slipped to me my in a in a in a, in a envelope uh, my ballot. Um, you know, it was it was really clean, and uh, I didn't get any feeling that I was being compromised. Uh, health-wise, by voting. So don't worry about that in most states. I don't know how it is in Texas. And, how was and it? You, can, you can donate to somebody's campaign. You yes. know, oh, no matter course. how much money you don't have, you can always have, you know, $5, $10 to somebody's bucks, campaign yeah. could make a big difference. And yeah, there's a number but, uh, of uh, Senate uh, campaigns in, in, oh, that could really use it. Right well, now. here's here's what's happened. Um, Biden, who we didn't think was capable of it, has raised so much money he has more money than he needs for the campaign. And so what he's done is he's turning over a lot of that 
leftover money to the Senate campaigns and to the congressional campaigns and is filtering that money down into those campaigns. Uh, the Democratic National Democratic Committee doesn't need a cent right now. They're cash rich. Uh, uh, but, you know, your local candidates, your congressional candidates and Senate candidates do need some help. They're going to get some help in the overflow money from the Democratic Party, but that isn't going to be enough. And I'm assuming, look, I'm saying that to all the Republicans out there. I mean, you, you know, you're not going to stop people, the Republicans, from doing the same thing, are you, Tom? No, of course not. Everybody should participate. You know. Yeah. So, Everybody. Yeah. So anyway, but I mean, let's face it, we're a group of people here all voting for the same guy, right? I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I am. yeah. Uh, and, and even, uh, you know, so and even if we had three more, four more people here tonight, they'd be probably Biden people, too. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't mind yeah. if, if some Trump people would like to call up tomorrow night. It's your last chance. But if some Trump people would like to call up tomorrow night, I'd be more than happy to hear from you, you know, um, because I don't like this being one-sided, uh, and I don't even think uh, Tom does either, who's really on the, on the left. You'd like to hear a good, intelligent argument for Trump, wouldn't you? <laughs> no such that would be animal. nice. <laughs> intelligent Trump would, argument. I, you know, there I, are I, three I would... words that are an oxymoron. <laughs> so far the only thing i hear are these you know you know people who are just sort of like in a cult you know it's it, it's unfortunately that's the truth i mean there's nothing rational or logical in in their in their support it's it's just like they it's 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 this this idolatry is this, this you know, well let me worship. let me put it this way you know i mean we'd like to think that america was an intelligent country overall it's really not mm -hmm. you know? actually intelligent people get caught up in cults too yeah i had a friend mm -hmm. i had a friend yeah. who was in jonestown I wow. wrote her yeah. story about it. she's really very interesting oh, she's unfortunately dead she died a couple of, about a year ago mm -hmm. but uh but you know, just the way you know, just from her reading her book, I realized. Well, who was that? Who who is who is, who is that? To get wait a minute, wait a minute. Who who was that? The woman. Well, her name was Cole. Oh, uh, okay. Because I knew I knew a woman that was Jim Jones's girlfriend, who yeah. I had on the show. I can't remember her name now, uh, but uh, um, she uh, she she went. She went out, left Jonestown to go into into town when all this thing went down. Okay. As so a matter she, of fact, that's what happened to this woman. Yeah. She was. They had a, a office in the city. Right. Right. Outside of town, and so she was there when when. So that's that's how she. Do you survived. remember her first name? It might be the same woman I'm oh, thinking. I wrote a of. book. Because <laughs> I know that the woman that I'm talking about wrote a book. It's, uh, her last name was Cole, K O K O L H L, K O H L, yeah. Yeah. Um, Probably see. the same person. It might be. Wow, that's interesting. Let me see. Well, what, talk what, amongst yourself. I'll look for a book. Okay, I'm just thinking if she was fairly young at the time. Well, you know. But my, my mom passed away when I was 13, and she, she saved a lot of stuff. She had a stack of newspapers of Jonestown. And my dad said, yeah, we knew some people, but I guess if she knew some, one of her friends that was in Jonestown. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But um, I got, I, I got, huh. I got recruit, recruited when I was in high school. I used to go to uh, concerts at Winterland, which was just right around the corner. From the people's And I remember temple, them yeah. passing out flyers and stuff to go to the church. How many years and, ago, uh, we, how many years ago was Jonestown now? 78. Wow. Wow. It was in 78. Same time, Harvey Milk was shot because of the same yeah the same first same time. months yeah yeah so yeah. at first i thought it was something about harvey milk why she saved him and then my dad my stepfather said no it's actually uh, they had a she had a friend that was in jones house yeah yeah I, the name cole doesn't doesn't ring a bell for me that's the only reason i don't think it's the same woman that i knew hey charlie's wearing the coca-cola shirt you know you know uh the san francisco sign alex yeah remember the coca-cola sign that lit that lights up all the time yeah it, years they're going to take it down this week why i don't know that's that's they're they're, they're posting they're going to be taking that down 
Wow, that's Ooh. not that's not right. If it's that old, they should preserve it. Okay, well, here's the book. What's it called? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. called Jonestown Survivor. Her name was uh, Laura Johnston Cole. Laura Johnston. And actually, no. I got to know her through the Quakers. No, that's not the. That's not uh, the. But, uh, that's she not... from San Diego. She just uh, died last year. Okay, this is not the woman I knew. I knew a woman from San Francisco, mm-hmm. and she was. Uh, uh, to begin with, she was gorgeous. I might add. I, uh, hot for but she wrote the book but too it's it's a good book it, yeah. it really is and as i said you know to, to to dismiss somebody as you know it's just being stupid or gullible or whatever you know it's anybody's success well they, i'll tell you i'll tell you it, 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 trump isn't exactly a cult leader he doesn't have the the uh, the, the chops to be a cult leader um uh, yeah, he but but people can be seduced into a cult. There's no question about that, and they can be intelligence intelligent and be seduced into it, you know. Um, but I uh, I just I'm you know uh, I I just think that what we've got here is we do have a bunch of people who really, you know, the, I don't know the, it, it, it's those it's those militia people, for instance. That's a good example. They're not exactly bright, okay? I really shouldn't say that. Do they have my address? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. They're not really that bright, you know. And uh, and secondly, you might go, well, we're here to protect the president. Is the reason we're here with our guns and everything. And I'm going, you're not the cops. You don't have the right to do that, you know? When we ask for your help, then come. Otherwise, stand down. Stay back, you know. It's Whatever. not your job. Yeah, it's not your job, man. Not your job. <laughs> well, I, you know, uh, we got another. I'll just be glad when this whole thing is over. Well, I'll be glad if if Biden wins. Um, I won't be so glad if if Trump wins. Uh, <laughs> I will not be. I, it will not be. Uh, I will not be festive on Wednesday if that's the case. You know. Yes, John. It would it would be uh, it would if we get the Senate and we will keep the House and Trump wins president, I think for sure he'll get impeached. Well, but, but then I take that back because it takes two thirds of the Senate. Yeah, yeah, you know. But but I mean, still, if uh, if we, know, yeah. if we get the presidency, we'll we get the Senate, we get the uh, the Congress, anything's possible, including yeah. you know, a really good health care and. Uh, a couple more people on the Supreme Court to even yeah, the whole yeah, thing sure. out. You know, anything's possible once you got the Senate at this point. Yeah. So that's it. Anyway, I'm going to just play the theme. Uh, boy, it's been what a nice bunch of people. I really like you guys. You know, I always say I don't have any friends, and then I suddenly realize every night I come here and I see Brian and I see Tom and I see John and I see Tony. I see Charlie, I see Jeff, and I see friends. You know, I see people who uh, maybe I'm not in the same room with them, but then again, during COVID, I'd be doing this anyway with them. So, you know, what the hell. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. Please, Tom, call more often. The coast is clear these days. Uh, Thank you very much, John Larkin. Thank you very much, Kevin. And thanks to Tony as well. What I'd like you all to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. By the way, the next program is Jack Bishop, and he's going to be having a citizen panel as well. This time, though, he'll be using Skype. He won't be using uh, um, the um, uh, Zoom, okay? He'll be using Skype, and the number for that is GabNet Live. You just type that in to Skype and say, I want to call GabNet Live. Uh, Meanwhile, I'll be back again tomorrow night, the last show before election night. Same time. Same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. And whatever you do, please, please wear a mask, okay? Good night, everybody.